Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry, but you've got the feedback of that going straight through there, and that's because I didn't plan that. I've normally always done this on Instagram, and I've never really had to try the Facebook Live function, but the great thing about Facebook Live is that I get to see your comments here instead of having to have a phone here, which I still have here, but I wouldn't then have to read the comments really small and put these on. These were about £2.99 from Boots or something like that. They are the most flattering glasses you've ever seen in your life. And they're also the worst glasses I've ever bought because they only improve things if you can probably see through them. I, I mean, you could probably see the moon from these, but you can't read with them. So I end up having to stick the phone so far up to my nose that I can't see anything. Anyway, I've got a load of unbelievable stuff tonight. As you can imagine, I've been gadget hoarding this week. And because it was Valentine's Day, I think the best sign of love is to show some self-love. So I bought myself a new camera, as you do. And I've got an unbelievable guest today. And I've been speaking to Vic and Vishal for the last three or four weeks. I came across their, um, I came across their page on Indiegogo and also on Instagram and on Facebook. I was like, what? Now, we all know Facebook tracks the living daylights out of everything you do. I'm just clicking on the comments here, sorry, so I can see those. There you go. Um, and I've been looking for, I don't know if you remember, about three weeks ago I did this beast mode thing where I was showing everyone what I was trying to do with my camera. And let me give a look here. I think you all probably saw that um, image. Where is it? Let's see if we can find it, shall we? Let's keep looking. I mean, I did send it to my computer, you know, responsibly, intelligently, but as usual, it goes in date order, so God knows where it's gone. Um, you remember anyway. There it is behind me, that beast mode grip. And it was utterly impossible to uh, unwieldy. And I was thinking, well, I'll try and find somebody that does a really good adapter for my phone. Because I want to explore the outer limits of my phone. I don't want to explore the outer limits of a camera because I never will. With the best will in the world, I would take 20 years to figure out how to use most of the menu settings on this camera here. It just takes forever and a day. There's no fun in that at all. Hello from Portsmouth, the tennis mentor. Thank you very much. It's uh, always a pleasure to have you. Just bring that comment in there. Now we've got this set up as well. So that just disappears after 15 or 20 seconds. One hopes, but I'm just going to delete it anyway or get rid of it from the screen. That's one of the things I love about Facebook Live compared to Instagram is you can do all this and they don't have a problem with it. Anyway, so I want to explore the outer limits of my phone rather than the lowest possible denominator of a camera and I came across this and I gotta say this was this was unbelievable for me I was so pleased to see this I'm going to show this to you and you can tell me what you think before I bring in my guest Vishal Kumar the founder of Alice Camera this is Alice the next step in camera design built by creators for creators Alice uses artificial intelligence to capture amazing 4K footage straight out of camera, then lets you share it with your followers instantly. The experience of a phone, the capability of a high-end mirrorless camera, this is the future of photography. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is my cue to bring in our guest, Vishal Kumar. Vishal, thanks so much for joining me. How are you? Absolute pleasure, Rashid. Thanks for having me. Very well, thanks. Great to join you on this Monday afternoon or evening. Monday yeah. evening. Well, we were going to do it yesterday evening, but there was something else going on yesterday, wasn't there? Might not have gone down yeah. too well at home with uh, with significant others. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Valentine's Day. Well, yeah, I mean, you also probably were spending a lot of time with your camera, so I didn't want to take you uh, away from that. Yeah, I was, <laughs> I was messing that. around with this thing. I was trying to take the odd photograph. It didn't work out so well. I did some slow-mo and um, when my wife found out that I'd emptied a, bag, a box of ball bearings all over the carpet, um, yeah, I, I'm persona non grata, shall we just say. But I was so excited because, you know, I, I spoke to Vic, I think it was about three weeks ago originally, when I first saw this ad and I was blown away. The idea of a, a, a phone being the portal to use a camera, something I've never really been able to do anyway. And, and I've always loved taking photos with this, taking videos with these things. Um, actually, I've got to say, I've enjoyed more taking photos with this cheap Huawei P30 than I have with my iPhone. But that's another another uh, complaint, gripe video I should do some other time. 
But when I came across this, I was amazed. Now, I also spoke to Vic and, you know, your brothers, but you're Londoners. And, you know, London's my hometown. It's so refreshing not to be, uh, you know, Korea, Taiwan, uh, Silicon Valley. Lovely to have London, you know, born and bred people coming up with something unbelievable. So what is your background? Yeah. Um, so yeah. Firstly, it's it's great that that you know Londoners. Uh, I think London's a great place actually to start a startup nowadays. From, uh, the resources of talent to the access to capital to uh, just the sheer um, excitement when it comes to kind of coming up with radical ideas. So London is a great place to have a startup. But a little bit about where we we came from. So I'm a um, <clears throat> I'm a data scientist who's worked in the creative industries all my life. And uh, before I started the company, I worked for an auction house called Sotheby's. Uh, and I was one of the first uh, data scientists at, at this company. Uh, but um, there's not really many people applying data science, machine learning and AI to the creative industries. And uh, I ended up inventing a job title called a cultural data scientist. And I was branding myself as a... <laughs> Hang on. So <laughs> what happened? You were about to get fired because your job was redundant. You were like, oh, no, no, I've got a great new role for myself. Well, it was something along those lines. Like, basically, I was going around saying to people that, you know, I'm a, I'm a data scientist in, you know, who applies data science to the arts and culture and all this other stuff. Uh, and it was a bit of a faff to, to explain all of that. So I just decided to, to invent this, this job title. But anyway, you know, on the back of all of that, uh, loads of people refer to me as a, as a cultural data scientist. I, I mean, I do some work for, uh, I was doing some work for kind of the Mayor of London and the European Commission and a range of other people. And they, people refer to me as a, as a cultural data scientist. So I wrote this blog post on Medium about um, cultural data science and, and what it means to be a cultural data scientist. Um, and as a result of just that particular niche, uh, I've grown um, quite a bit of a following uh, on the on the back of that, that, that particular niche. So I'm not only a data scientist, I'm, I'm a content creator. I, you know, I talk about uh, uh, this, this really weird um, and unique application of, of data science and machine learning for creativity. Um, and I do a lot of public this, speaking behind all of this. Extent. This is the extent of my data science. <laughs> I I've got know what I don't know what that button there, MRC does, and I'm 48 years old. Right. I've got one of these. Wow. It's a Cassia. That's yeah, a... <laughs> there's just way too many buttons on that for me. So explain to me the, the scientific side for a second on a, <clears throat> on a basic level for somebody. Data science. Tell me a bit more about that. Yeah. So um, let suppose you want to understand like basic trends that are happening in uh, the creative industries. So, for example, you want to understand how popular uh andy warhol is doing uh, as an artist uh in um in the art world then you know you can look at instagram data or twitter data or social media data and a range of other things to, to understand that uh but also you know if you want to understand where are the most popular places to take an image um in in a city you could use some uh computer vision analysis to to go through Google uh, Google Maps or to go through Instagram to try and understand that from a pure research perspective. Uh, so it's things like this that I was doing um, when I was um, when I when I was doing some of my research. Uh, but I was also kind of talking about a lot of this stuff and blogging about quite a lot of this stuff. And uh, for me, you know, as a creator, I'm much more interested in the camera, the camera's ability to uh, capture video footage and for me to translate that idea to, to people. I'm not really like massively concerned about the specs of the camera. I don't really care if it does 120p and I'm, I'm not hugely concerned about uh, any other kind of other specs. I just want to be able to record my content quick, get the idea across and, and kind of ship it out to people. Whereas Liam, who I co-founded the business with, uh, Liam is um, a PhD electronics engineer um, who's always built uh, AI embedded hardware systems for creatives. Uh, and he did a 12 month fellowship at the Royal Academy of Engineering. Uh, and but Liam, Liam has a kind of uh, strong interest in photography, photography, like uh, photography 101. Uh, and he approaches it much more from from the, the photography angle. Um, and I met Liam on a program called Entrepreneur First, which uh, is a deep tech startup accelerator program in London. 
Uh, and Vic, who's my brother, who who joined the team as well. Vic comes from a banking background. He worked right. at J.P. Morgan Morehouse uh, before this, but he's also uh, Vic's. You know, Vic's interested in photography as well, and 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 practices and gets. Yeah, that came across. Um, I mean, I spoke to um, obviously both of you on the phone, and your passion for it came across quite clearly. It wasn't as if you were just like, oh, this is a niche idea that we could probably sell. It was actually you. You all seem to like photography and videography and love not just like it but love it um and as you yeah. said whether it's spec related or not it's actually you just like I, I don't care about the specs what i want it to do is i want to film and i want it to come out the way i saw it yeah 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 absolutely and it's not just us you know there, there are now uh tens of millions of people around the world who uh, now make an income from producing this video uh and image content and getting it out to people on a daily basis. And that includes live streams, like things that you're doing today. And, and there's tons of other people that, that do this stuff now. Uh, so if you compare, well. <laughs> uh, you're a great host, Rashid. Um, what, I would, no, but what, I would, <laughs> what I would say is 10 years ago, it, wasn't, it was inconceivable that um, it, it, was, it would be possible to be making six figures a year to, to do this type of stuff. Now it's, <clears throat> it's you know, well within reach for 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 millions of people around the world and um these people uh are using camera devices to uh, record their content of course a lot of people start out uh by using uh their smartphone uh you know if you want to get going it's really likely that you will use your smartphone because it will give you a very good start uh when trying to create content when getting stuff on tiktok and instagram and and whatever it might be youtube facebook uh, but as you progress, as you get uh, more and more um, interested in the content, as as you care more and more about the, the quality of the content, uh, once you start getting paid by uh, brands and and other people to produce that content, uh, once Nike uh, sends you an email and says, "Hey, uh, can you shoot this short video for us because we uh, want to promote this this new this new shoe," it's very very unlikely that you're going to rock up to a Nike job with your iPhone 12 Pro. And and shoot the content. You're gonna you're gonna take a real piece of kit, <clears throat> um, but um, you know beyond the commercial uh, commercial work. When it comes to uh, producing a YouTube channel, if you look at most YouTubers, you know people with over fifty thousand followers um, don't really use iPhone twelve Pros. I would love to know what percentage actually use iPhone twelve Pros uh, to 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 produce their content. But a lot of them use proper proper gear proper kit with good lighting and everything else uh, but it's a it's a real struggle and there's a huge learning curve to to learn how to operate uh, these cameras uh, there's a saying that it takes um it takes weeks to learn how to operate a camera uh, it takes hours to uh transfer that that content to to your to your laptop but it takes seconds to to make something go viral and uh what we are interested in is uh, building a device, a camera device that works very closely with the smartphone uh, to shoot the the quality content that people are expecting to to, to shoot, but to significantly reduce the complexity uh, of doing of, of shooting that content and sharing it with with their audience. And that's what which that's kind of what we're trying to do with the Alice camera. Our mission is to empower the next generation of of creators. I I, th I think that nothing could be you know, closer to the truth than that. I remember in 2004, five, when YouTube was the place where all you did was you'd go there and maybe see a music video. You could maybe watch an old, uh, you know, VH1 video that you'd never seen before, like the thriller video, or if you'd never seen the, the, the you know, the video for a Beyonce uh, track or something, you could go on and that was all it was. It was just a bit of a joke. There was no vloggers, there was no content creation. It was just those who could who had an archive of footage, who could digitize that and post it up on online, um, were doing that. And I remember 2008, 9, 10, and my own experience with YouTube in 2008, 9, and 10 was basically posting videos of me doing stupid stunts on motorbikes, um, and mini motorbikes for that matter, not even big ones, just doing you know stupid stunts on those. That was it. Um, and then advertising came in and then money came in and everything changed as it does with everything with sport with everything once money gets involved and people now i mean the faff of uploading content is still horrendous uh, i don't care who you are i was talking to ash neves who you've got there the tennis mentor um and 
one of the things that we were discussing was how he uploads. Now, he creates these videos, these tennis videos. Some of them are for schools. Some of them are for um, just for his Instagram channel. And he'll film them on a Canon M50 in a good production values, good sound, puts it all together. Then he may edit that footage once he's taken it off the cards onto his iPad. He'll edit that footage. Then he'll send it to his computer where he'll upload it to YouTube because it's a stable stream. You don't want to do it on your iPad on YouTube Studio because it's not quite up there. Um, you, you, know, you know the pain of that. It just falls apart. And, and then he's sitting there making sure that all his hashtags are in there and everything. It's such a pain. I mean, it really is, even to this day, to post decent content on the web. There's not a shortened process. And I've got the feeling that the solution to all of this is the Alice camera. Yeah. Um, you know, even even modern cameras that are being released this year and, you know, even a couple of months ago, you 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 have, you know, you start to think about cameras such as the A7 C or or the A7S2 or or Canon R5 or whatever it might be, these devices are being released every year and they can't be, you know, in terms of uploading onto the internet and uploading content, they can't be further away from from what people uh, require than than uh, than than is possible. You know, um, it, it's still it's still the very same processes that you would go through had you bought a camera five years ago. The the, the, the needle has not moved uh, quite, you know, far, not far at all from from yeah. five years ago in terms of the, the the workflow required to upload something online. And it's been, unfortunately, to the detriment of these camera companies. If you look at the number of digital cameras that were sold worldwide in 2010, the same year Instagram was founded, uh, there were 120 million digital cameras that were sold worldwide every year. And that figure had dropped to less than 19 million by the end of 2019. Uh, and the figures for 2020 are much worse. So we're talking about a 6x collapse, a demolition of the camera industry. Hang on, uh, in terms that's of great. Are digital you, you're telling me that there's less than 20 million digital <laughs> cameras sold annually? Yeah. That's Compared to 120 million uh, 10 years ago. That's and that's incredible. data from SEPA. Yeah. yeah. How are they staying in business with such small... I mean, they must have massive margins to stay in business. Yeah, you know, I think a lot, it's a, a lot, a lot of it's down to kind of uh, pride or company pride. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I know Nikon's not doing very well at the moment. Uh, Olympus also had a few hiccups as well recently. Yeah, yeah, and and the pro the, um, the unfortunate truth is that the products that they are releasing to market <clears throat> are very much. I know that you know this is marketing spiel, but they yeah. they lack product market fit. And product market fit is essentially, does the product fit the demands of the market today? And clearly uh, these cameras uh, don't uh, to, to the extent that, that smartphones do. Uh, smartphones uh, clearly do have product market fit for a large bunch of people under the tip of the iceberg uh, because uh, they have, you know, the adoption of smartphones to take and, and shoot image content has, has massively increased. Uh, but there, there are, and also you have to bear in mind that that cameras have a shelf life of of around you know around three years or, or four years compared to maybe a smartphone, which uh, the churn rate is every every twelve months. You know, people get new smartphones every twelve months. Right. But you know, taking all of these things into account, um, it's still a complete faff and pain to, to to take content and to put it online. Just to give you an example, Rashid. Uh, the other day I wanted to, uh, so obviously we're running the Indiegogo campaign at the moment. Yeah. And uh, I wanted to give uh, our backers an update on at the end of the month to say, hey guys, you know, this is what's happened this month. Uh, this is what we're doing, um, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Please check out the campaign. And I decided not to shoot it on my iPhone. I decided to shoot the content on my Sony, which I'm using now to stream this, this call. Yeah. Um, and all I wanted to do was a 30 second Instagram reel uh, to upload uh, to, to, to Instagram. And I recorded the footage and I then wanted to transfer it to my phone because I wanted to use Adobe Rush on my phone to edit yeah. the, the, the video and to get it in landscape mode and to quickly ship it out. And 
honestly, I'm not joking. It took 30 minutes. This is a five minute 4K video to stream to my phone through the Sony app. The app collapsed two or three times when I was doing it. Um, after I've after I've done that, um, you know, uh, love the comment by the way. Um, That's we, after I'd, tennis mentor. Yeah, after I'd um, you know waited for it to transfer, yeah. my phone was completely handicapped. I wasn't able to check any emails yeah. or anything like that because the Sony app locks you from doing that. Yeah. Um, once the thing had been done. Uh, I didn't have time to edit the video that day because I got uh, inundated with with meetings and a range of other things. I just wanted to quickly do something during my lunch break. Right. And then I ended up having to do it the following day yeah. uh, by actually putting it onto my computer and then Bluetoothing it back to my phone to put onto Instagram. It's, you know, a complete, yeah. complete nightmare. It really is. And Ash says earlier as well, Faf Central. I think it's important, actually, we, we talk about these features and how much they separate themselves. I'd love to play this video because it does really in many ways, just show in, in whatever, 50, 60 seconds, what you're getting. And we'll talk about the Indiegogo after this, actually, because, you know, I'm a subscriber. As soon as I knew it was available, I said at the time to Vic, right now, you know, uh, tell me where I can, you know, take my money right now. And I didn't just buy one, I bought two of them, because I know that I'm probably going to break one um, within about a week, either lose my temper with the, the system or clumsily drop it or try and stick it onto my car with one of those mounts and it goes flying off behind me. So I thought, why not? I have two of them. And I thought they were cheap at twice the price. So I was more than happy to get involved. We will talk about the Indiegogo because I want to share the link with people so they know where to go. But I want them to see some of the features in this video that very, very slickly produced, by the way, um, is um, by you, that is, not by me. Um, I want everyone to watch this one. So yeah, guys, have a look at this. I absolutely love that video and it you know blew me away i'm sold as you know tell me about the indiegogo and how that's been going you went out launched on the 10th or 11th of february was it uh it was tuesday the 9th Sorry. yeah tuesday. uh it's been going well and you know thanks again rashid for for backing us and believing in, in you know the vision that, that we're trying to you know bring bring to life essentially uh it's um it's you know it's you know, I would say the faith favors the brave, and we are going into what we understand is a is an industry that that is uh, seriously lacking product market fit. But we believe that there's significant advantage on the upside to provide a solution for creators that's much more suitable for for, for not just not just 2021, but for for the next decade. Uh, and the way in which uh, we we see that future is to by by bringing mirrorless cameras uh, much closer to the smartphone ecosystem uh, and making them work together in a, in a unanimous way. Uh, but the Indiegogo campaign is is going um, is going swimmingly. Uh, we last time I checked, we were on 180 backers, um, which is great, and and we're really excited to to get you guys uh, involved. We. Um, you know, we'll be giving a couple of updates actually, hopefully soon on, on the campaign page. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to sharing uh, some of our AI features and stuff. Uh, we're very active on YouTube. Uh, yeah. And a lot of the time, if you want to hear or see any updates of what we're doing as a team, you'll be able to see them on YouTube. Well, we've got a question here from Amisha. Let's have a look at this. What does it say? <clears throat> yeah. 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 Um, 
so thanks amisha for 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 the for the for the comments uh what i would say is um so there's a few a lot we get similar questions like this and there's firstly it's worth uh understanding uh the camera companies themselves but not just not just the people that work there and the engineers and, and the vice presidents and everything else but also uh the second thing to understand is the 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 hardware and the product that they build. So firstly, uh, in terms of the, the, cam the camera companies themselves, they have a very particular camera company culture. Uh, you know, I'm appearing here on a live stream wearing a hat and a t-shirt yeah. and the team's, you know, really young. We are a bunch of creators ourselves and a lot of us put out content on social media. And so we inherently understand a lot of these issues and problems uh, just through first nature, frankly. Yeah. Uh, but the camera companies, on the other hand, um, have been uh, very stuck in their ways for uh, a very long time. And it's because of the, their, their reluctance uh, as, as, a, as a kind of camera division that they, they've not included uh, these types of features. And you, Rishi, you can even chime in a bit here. You've probably bought countless of cameras over the years and uh, their, their ability to, to have Android or editing capabilities on device is non-existent and doesn't seem to be um, anywhere near being offered on what's 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 on offer at the moment. I mean, this is a classic example, uh, Amisha. This is the DJI uh, Osmo Pocket 2, and it's the creator combo, which you think, okay, well, that means I should be able to create with this. And it's got the ability to stream to Facebook or to YouTube. But it's not like it's giving you anything in terms of like a, a, a cinematic grade on that or anything. You're not, you're basically just getting what's in camera being sent out. And with the best will in the world, if you look around here, and I'm sure the same goes for Vishal, is that we've got, you know, I've got light here, light there, light above my head there. I've got a decent camera. I'm doing all of this to live stream. If you ask me to do this with this, I'm going to want something to pretty the shot and try doing that. Have fun. You'll be there for about three days going through the menu trying to do that. So I still don't know why they don't do it, but you're right. The camera culture is we will make this you will like this and you know what we'll do we'll put a little bit of silver on top that'll make it cool it's not enough anymore yeah. it really isn't so 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 that's you know point number one is about their camera company culture and then secondly you know the product themselves the way in which these products are engineered uh you the way you have to think about them is that they are mechanical devices so the analogy yeah. that i love to give is an analogy from the car industry um so a uh, a camera like a Sony A7C uh, that you have um, at the moment, Rashid, that you're just showing off, uh, you can think of that camera as a um, kind of like a Ford Mustang. You know, it's a good looking piece of kit. It's a powerful piece of kit. There's a lot of horsepower. Uh, you need to pump it with a lot of uh, gasoline and uh, it's kind of a noise guzzling car. Uh, but it's a mechanical device. Uh, on the other hand, hang Alice. On. It's uh, not Alice, just a mechanical uh, device. Very, very important here. It's a tax write-off, and if I don't keep showing it off <laughs> in the show, it will never be a tax write-off. So I have to keep showing it to say, look, it was for needful things. That was the reason. <laughs> well, now, now that we understand the dual purpose of, of your of your camera devices, it, it, it is it is also <laughs> for a lot of people. It is a tax write-off as well. But, Sorry, but you were saying it's a Ford Mustang, Mustang, it's a heavy gas guzzler. Sorry, I interrupted. Carry on. Yeah, Ford Mustang, heavy gas guzzler. And that is the Sony camera. Uh, but Alice, on the other hand, Alice is a computer. Uh, Alice is uh, an AI accelerated computational camera and is much more similar uh, in, in the analogy to a Tesla than, uh, than a Ford Mustang. So think of Alice as the Tesla, uh, which is... Um, a computer, it has a CPU, which is a computer processing unit. It has a dedicated artificial intelligence chip on device. It has very good software capabilities. Uh, it runs and it allows us to, to share onto social media and all the other things. So it's engineered in a way that's uh, much more conducive and much more similar to a, a smartphone. Whereas the camera, the, uh, the Sony camera is more of a, uh, a gas guzzling Ford Mustang. Both will take images and, and videos, you know, a Ford and Tesla will get you from New York to Connecticut. 
but one's a car uh, that takes gas and another's a computer. And, and that's the same with, with the analogy that I like to give with Alice. Yeah. And I just keep thinking, I, I want this thing in my hands right now. Now I want to play <laughs> with it. Must be tough for you. I mean, like, you know, you're working with these prototypes and, you know, these builds. Um, I love the fact that uh, we've not mentioned before, but you went with the Micro Four Thirds um, uh, adoption and you were accredited by the Micro Four Thirds agency, right? So any Micro Four Thirds lens, I suppose, either a Sony or a, is it Fuji or Sony or who are the other people that make Micro Four Thirds famously? So, so Micro Four Thirds is just Olympus and Panasonic, but right. uh, you can use Panasonic. adapters. You can use adapters to. Uh, the good thing about Micro Four Thirds is uh, it's a very flexible and open lens mount. Uh, we don't need to pay a license fee to use the system. We just are in agreement with Olympus and Panasonic that uh, we have. Uh, we are building uh, products compliant with the standard. Um, and uh, what other companies like Sony and Canon and Nikon actually try to do is they create their own lens mount and they build all of their products around their lens mount. Uh, and it means you can't use Canon lenses on Sony cameras or you can't use Sony lenses on Nikon cameras because they try and lock customers away uh, from each uh, from each other. Uh, uh, but this this is this is uh, you know obviously very old fashioned, we believe. Uh, whereas the Micro Four Thirds lens mount is, is much more flexible. It's much, uh, it, you can use adapters to put Canon and Nikon lenses onto the, the lens mount. So a lot of uh, insight that we got and a lot of excitement that we're getting for Alice is that people will tap into that nostalgia of being able to use some of their old lenses that they have uh, collecting dust on, on their shelves with, uh, with a more kind of capable body. I can't wait. I mean, and there's, uh, there's no lenses here gathering dust at all um i use everything <laughs> i buy i promise um Vishal, it's been such a pleasure having you on um i'm, I'm really honored that you, you even came on this a couple of things before you go indiegogo how do people uh subscribe what do they do just do indiegogo slash alice camera what's the, the url i'll type this in now while we're talking yeah, it's, it's a long and complicated URL, but I would just type um, Al Indiegogo Alice Camera and, and we Google. should appear in Google. I'll, I'll send you the link afterwards, but you can just type Indiegogo Alice Camera uh, and uh, we should be up there. Uh, you um, take a look, please do take a look through the, through the campaign page and what we're offering. We spend a lot of time putting all the different points and, and detailed points about what it, what's the value proposition that we're really trying to, to offer to, yeah. to, to consumers and backers. And if you believe that, that that value proposition resonates with you, then we will be absolutely delighted and more than happy to have you as one of our backers. Uh, and you know, we're looking forward to, to delivering uh, the camera for you guys. Yeah, and I can't wait. So what is the rough expected build date for this thing or release date? We're talking October or September? Yeah, we're looking at uh, delivery date uh, of October, 2021. Right. It's going to be the ultimate Halloween present for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it looks like you really uh, treat yourself around uh, big, uh, big events. Yeah, big events like Halloween, uh, St. Mary's Day, St. Patrick's Day, uh, Christmas Day, <laughs> Boxing Day, uh, my birthday. Any, I mean, I would say any day, but I, I at least look for, you know, like the uh, Valley of the Kings Day, if I'm Egyptian some days. <laughs> Some days I go for the Uzbekistan national holiday as well. I think it's worth it. You know, um, one should never overlook these celebrations. Um, Tuesdays, yeah, absolutely. So Ashley Neves has very kindly uh, posted the link right there. And I hope Ashley oh, is going to be fishing out his credit card now and getting himself one of these. What do you pay if you want to get one right now? There's still an early bird, a few left, right? So yes, so so the super early bird prices is sold out. Uh, the early bird price is available from six hundred pounds, and that's for the body only. Okay, I just yeah. think it's just worth it. So worth it. I mean, imagine that and locked onto your phone, taking outrageous pictures. Lob the damn thing in your bag. Get on the phone and explain to whoever you share a bank account with why you just bought another lens. Vishal, it's been such a pleasure having you on. Thank you so much. And I hope to have you on another show in a month's time or so. Uh, I'm sure everyone would like to have you back so we can talk a little bit more about how you're getting on, maybe in you know a month or two months' time. Thank you once again. Brilliant. Thanks for having me on. And absolutely, would love to, love to come back and um, chat to you guys in more detail. So cheers. Brilliant.
Thanks a lot, Michelle. So thank you, everyone who uh, <coughs> who tuned in and watched that. Uh, I absolutely love the Atlas camera. I really do. I, as you know, I mean, I look at the boundaries I push here. This cage with a light on it for a phone, um, and you've got what do you call it? Let's click over to here. You can see this setup is on a cage, and it's just, you know, I'm always doing stuff, pushing the boundaries of one of these. Um, I've got the gimbal set, uh, the, you know, the, what do you call this thing? What did I, I showed it to you two weeks ago, I should remember. Uh, obviously I use it all the time, that's why I bought it. It's the DJI Osmo 4, something like that. Anyway, so this gimbal goes on the back of it and you can do all sorts of stabilized photo. I'm sure if I hound Vishal enough and his brother Vic, uh, and Liam, if I just keep hounding them, they'll do some sort of inbuilt image stabilization so that you can, um, you know, avoid using a gimbal. I mean, given that it's getting better and better in these, I'm sure that's- We already do that, Rashid. He's still in the green room. I haven't even kicked him out. Look at that, he's still in the green room. Let's bring him back. What do you mean you already do that? Why didn't you tell me that while you were live? You still are live, by we, the way. We, we, we do that. We're doing electronic image stabilization. So basically, uh, the long and short of it is, um, cameras use uh, IBIS, five axis uh, image stabilization uh, in, on, in the device uh, to, to kind of move the sensor around so, so that, it, so that they, they stabilize everything. And they, that lenses offer um, in lens stabilization, but uh, you, I, I have five axis IBIS on my camera and lens stabilization. And frankly, it sucks. Like it's <laughs> so bad to, yeah. to the extent that it, it's unusable you know i still need a gimbal to be able to do that um and what what we're doing is we're 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 using the type of electronic stabilization that you get in an iphone so when you're using your iphone and you're running and you're trying to shoot your friend like you know running through a forest or whatever yeah. it's not shaky at all because they use uh, electronic image stabilization alice will have electronic image stabilization we're not using mechanical solutions. We're using software-based solutions that are much cheaper and more effective and frankly, better yeah. at doing the job. Yeah, okay. Well, that's one more thing. So that another reason for you to go online, go on Indiegogo and back a London-based company. If you're in England, let's do this. Let's back them. Let's get them back to the hilt. Uh, Vishal, one more time, thank you so much. Um, so yeah, Cheers. there's me thinking I'd muted him and I hadn't actually, I just let him just let him, you know, watch the show and stay in the green room. I'm, I, I wonder what happens in the green room. Or should we one day have a green room? I think maybe we'll do that at the bar and have a proper green room. Now, what have I been buying? <clears throat> I did do an unboxing video of the Sony A7C that I bought. And mm, it's not a great video. I'm not very happy with it. And so I'm not going to bother showing you the unboxing video. But I will show you the... Um, Oh, how do I click to the other camera? I will show you one of the reasons that I got to this point. So I bought, as you know, the Sony uh, RX10 Mark IV. And this is a, <laughs> I'm gonna do that again, hold on a second. Let me just, this is, um, this is absolutely necessary. This is absolutely necessary. Right, so this has got a <laughs> 24 to 600 mil lens on it, but that wasn't the reason I bought it. The reason I bought this <laughs> was because it shot at a thousand frames per second. And I was thinking to myself, well, I could really do with adding that to my uh, cameras, um, you know, my range of cameras, because I've got the M50 and the M6 that I use for the live streams and stuff. And I wanted to have something that I could add to that and, and this was it, you know, this was the, the camera that I thought would be, <laughs> just one more time. Um, um, who doesn't need that in their life? <laughs> but it's incredible. For those of you who saw on the Touch Tennis page where I shot a thousand frames per second, it was incredible, an unbelievable camera. And I got used to the Sony menu system. I started toying with the idea of getting a Sony A7S III, and I just thought <clears throat> it's probably a step too far for the sort of stretch I will be able to take that phone to. And I decided on getting myself this, and this is the Sony A7C. And I mean, look at that, it's a thing of beauty, isn't it? It's just, 
unbelievable. It really is, you know. And if you were one of those people that vlogs, which I'm not, you could simply flip the camera, turn the screen towards yourself so you could see what you're shooting. So I think you've got to snap the lens out like that and then you can see that. There you go. Hello camera, how are you? Nice to see you. Anyway, so I got this and it is a scandal. It's an absolute scandal of, of epic proportions. Uh, I'm not gonna walk you through all of the features on this, but I am gonna say if you're gonna buy a camera um, on top of the Alice camera, this is a camera you should consider if you're into video right now. It really is outrageously good. I mean, outrageously good. And I justified every penny of it just because I, I felt like I had to. But I've also got some decent gadgets this week that aren't necessarily ridiculously expensive, that are just fun. Um, I, I hope you like these, actually. Um, so what have we got this week? All right, let's check it out. All right, what have we got? First things first, we've got lots actually. So, these lighting gels, you can buy them on Amazon, and they are amazing for changing the look of what you're shooting. So, if you want to go for that sort of Michael Bay kind of film, you'd get these ones, like orange ones, like this. And I'll show you what they do. Now you can cut these down. They're like seven or eight quid. They're not expensive. But if you're lighting your YouTube studio or you're lighting your studio where you're doing pieces to camera, for example, that you want to record, I'll show you the difference between the standard shot. So here's your shot here. Now if I hold this over the light, can you see the way that tint goes orange? Do that again over the light. It just gives it a completely different look, that orange, that sort of tungsten look there. Now bear in mind there are other lights in this room so I'm having to block lots of lights. But the main light that's on this, that different look is phenomenal. You can go blue, you can go teal, you can go orange, you can go for any color you like. And the pack comes with a load of them, they're like 10 or 12 quid. I'll put the link in the um, description after the show so you can see that. Now, what else did I get? Um, this, this is the worst quality description I've ever come across. Read the title and tell me if you can see what's wrong with it. Multifunctional, powerful flashlight series. Okay, I'm pretty so sure that that should be a C, not a T. What do you get in the box? Let's have a look. I wanted a torch that could act as a multitude of things. So let's put the camera where it belongs. Um, uh, yeah, spelling, absolutely. That's just a joke. Right, so what do you get? You get this torch, and you really need this torch in your life. Because in terms of brightness, it will outshine the sun. It is so, so bright, it's incredible. Now I've just got to remember how to turn it on. There you go, right, I don't want to blind you, but God, yeah, mind your eyes. I mean, it's just, you can probably see, if I do this, if I put this here, you can see my bones. Look at that. That is crazy bright. Look at that. You can see my bones. That's insane. Insane torch. Now, what else is awesome about this torch? The other thing is, oh, look at that. That blue lens flare. Look at that. It's like a Hollywood movie, isn't it? The blue lens flare going across the screen. Awesome. Right. What else is awesome about this is the following. So you hold that down to turn it off. You can plug a USB into here and charge your phone with this. This has a 2000 milliamp hour battery in it, which means you could probably give your phone half an hour of charge with this. You could also mace, sorry, you could probably hit a chicken over the head if you were hunting for it in the woods. I mean, this is ridiculous. And of course, compulsory belt clips so you could hang it on and you've got this. I personally wouldn't use something like this thing here. I would have this on a carabiner hanging off my belt. These, <clears throat> info at amslab.de, we are from the Germany, we are from Germany. What is mine a knife? Right, let's get my knife, actually no, I still love this knife more than any knife. This 
is the quiet carry knife. I told everyone about this a few weeks ago when I first showed this on air. It's a joke, this knife. It's still so sharp. Haven't sharpened it yet. It's still ridiculous. Right, pop this open. These or what any man going into the woods or the jungle or whatever needs in their life. Or even still, if you're just a cameraman, right? And you're taking a couple of cameras with you. You basically just, how many more times do they want to package this? Like nine, five thousand packagings. Right, so you, this here, look at that. I mean, if I bring that up to the camera, you can see. You just loop that around your belt. And it's Velcro. So look, if I stand up, just loop this around my belt. And that's not going anywhere. I mean, that's pretty tight. And now if I close this knife and I wanted to stick anything on that, my scientific pull test proves that it will not go anywhere. That is unbelievable. So those were like a tenner. You should get those. Those are awesome. If you're ever going out into the wild or anything or into the woods, you need something to keep something from being in your pockets. So you just want to hang it around your belt. That's an awesome piece of gear, that is. So this is from, who are these people? Info at ams-lab. But I got them on Amazon. Um, they were like 10 quid or something like that for a pack of those. I'm hopefully not going to use this camera again. So I'm gonna show you what happens. I keep getting this camera falling forward like that. So I decided to get what every household YouTube studio needs. These are sandbags and everyone needs sandbags. Now, if you don't have any sand available, open the zip and you can fill it with flour or with sugar. Preferably not sugar, because you might have an ant infestation in the middle of the summer. But they're double zipped, so you've got one zip there on the outside, and another zip on the inside, and you fill that up with sand or whatever, heavy material, ball bearings or something like that. And that will sit comfortably on the other end here and balance that out. Or you can chuck it on the floor and layer it over the item. So let's say, for example, you've got a tripod leg that's not too sturdy, just hang it over it at the bottom, five kilograms each side, and when you need to lift it up, you just pick it up by the bag like that and get rid of it. I quite like these. Again, these were 20 quid on Amazon, and they're sturdy as, and I got five of them, sorry, four of them for 20 quid. So definitely, definitely a buy. I would recommend that wholeheartedly. What does every man need in his life? This I had to get, this I had to get. This technology is outrageously good. This is base technology. This is the stuff that dreams are made of. And nightmares, actually, when you lose all of the important stuff that you're looking for. I love this sort of thing. You will never, ever in your life get all of these items back in the box the way they came. So enjoy the moment you first open them. When you first open this box, this is the best it's going to get. It's never going to get better. Multi-tools. Thousands of screwdrivers and Allen keys and everything. Look at that. Every kind of screw you need and it's so organized. And what attracts the eye is that it's organized to start with. And you just know it's never gonna be again. So I've got a, an extender. Everyone needs an extender. Put that in there, I think, there you go. Oh, look at that, so it's got that wrench that I can, I can screw that, hold this, and get into an awkward place and, and screw, look. That's awesome, I quite like that actually. Better than I thought, I've been meaning to open that a couple of weeks ago, but I, I lost it, I couldn't find out where I put it, I bought it two or three weeks ago. Oh, look at that, so the trays, do they? Oh, I thought they fell forward. They don't. Oh, they do, yeah. Oh, look at that. So the trays of things, look, they go backwards as you put them away. Look at that. And then it's not really like Batman quality, but look at the way they go back into their place. 
Like I said, that's the best it's ever going to get. It's never going to... Oh, they've already messed up. It's never going to get that good again. It's quite sad, actually. Um, knowing that this is now a mess. Uh, that will stay organized for five minutes in my household. That long? Really? I mean, this is going to stay... It's not even lasted a minute and a half in mine. Anyway, this is the new style 45 bits, high quality for your life. <laughs> I mean... The packaging on these things. I mean, people come up with the worst names everywhere. New style, high quality for your life. Who who comes up with this? I mean, seriously, who comes up with this? I don't know what this rubber thing is for. I mean, I'm sure it's got some purpose, but I'm going to bend that, get rid of that. And talk, take you on to my last subject. But before I get on to my last subject, what I need you to do is share this post on your timeline. And I will select somebody to send a pack of four Tile mates to because Tile are the official sponsor of the channel. So share this program or pro, whatever you want to call it, to your timeline on Facebook. And maybe even share a link to it in your story on Instagram. Would really appreciate that because the more people we get watching, the more worthwhile it is for me to spend as much money as I am spending on a weekly basis on gadgets. Now, Bear in mind that I would probably buy all those gadgets anyway, so that sob story doesn't hold a lot of weight. But Chris Eaton and Marcus Willis bought me this. Um, oh, it's gotten stiff, hasn't it? It used to be a lot looser than that. There you go, that's better. They bought me that 10 years ago, March 2011. And what a present. What a present. So it's probably very hard for you to see from here, but can't click it open anymore. It's either gotten too stiff or I've lost my thumb ability in this hand. <laughs> I know how I can practice that. There you go. That's how you do it. Right. So on the front, because of the love of poker, let me just see if I can bring that across there so it fades in. You can see it is an ace of spades. And on the back, it says the goat. There you go. Now you can see that reflection. <coughs> Problem with Zippos is they are notoriously happy running out of gas, out of the butane or propane, whatever you put in them. So you always, you know, you fill them up with petrol and four days later, you go back to light them and they've run out because they've leaked and the fuel's gone everywhere. So I bought myself this from Zippo. Not just your standard Zippo. This is the new double butane insert. So it's USB rechargeable and it's a double beam. So not butane, sorry, double beam. And what that means is you don't ever need gas. You can just charge it up. And if you've got a USB cable with you, let's be honest, who hasn't got a USB cable with them all the time? It creates an arc. And this is the cable that it comes with. And it's not charged at the moment. Let me just plug this in quickly. Let me see if I can plug this into something. Now this fits in your traditional Zippo, like that, right? So I now have taken the insides out. I stick this in my Zippo, like that. And I've got a lighter. Now, perhaps I should have charged this before the show. But if you give me like one minute, I will figure out a way to do that. Right, let's plug this in here. Probably not going to need a great deal of charge, to be honest. Plug this into a high-powered charger. This charger is one of the best chargers I've ever owned, by the way. And there you go. Right, so the blue light is on. I think you can see that. Oh, look at that. Look at that lens flare. Loving that lens flare. Absolutely loving that lens flare. So the blue light is on. It's charging. We have liftoff. Maybe I should read the instructions before I go on the show. I still love the, the text on the front. Look at that. Zippo. Takes me back to being, sorry, I really should do something about my fingernails, shouldn't I? Or maybe just hide that one. That's the worst one. It's the one that picks the guitar the most, those two. But this takes me back to being 12, 13 years old when I couldn't afford a Zippo. So I had a fake one. And I made up for it. All right, let's see. Do you need to read the instructions? This is a question that general safety warning. No, I don't need to do that. Right, so it's charging up at the moment. 
I think. Is it charging? I don't know. Turn that one, two, three. Well, this is definitely on, so I think it's charging, but it could be, I'll have to show you next week. I'm gonna to have to show you that it works next week. I've seen a watch with a USB lighter. What have you seen? Um, a lighter a colleague had, and it was so cheap. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's some like weird things that do this sort of new arc technology where it's basically just an electric charge between two points, and that creates as much of a flame as a lighter does. Because, um, you know, the rest of the time, I mentioned this one about five weeks ago on Instagram as one of my favorite gadgets out there, which is this one here. I love that. It's just so ridiculous. I mean, you could probably burn through sheet metal with that. And the, the great thing about it is who doesn't need a lighter that lights upside down? Because whenever you're doing those, I've got to be careful I don't burn my lens. Whenever you're doing the um, birthday candles, you want a lighter that lights upside down. And if you use this, you fill it up with gas, it lasts for weeks and weeks and months. Just not sure it would work in a real survival situation of sorts. Right, let's unplug this quickly and see holding that for a few seconds and it's doing nothing. I'm sure I need to charge this for about four hours or something like that, or probably more, but I'm so pumped about it because I've now got an insert for my Zippo that I know if I charge it up fully will last for a good two or three weeks. And that is my Zippo back to life that Chris and Marcus bought me all those years ago. Um, I hope you had fun watching the show tonight. Thank you for everyone who stayed. Amisha, Tennis Mentor, Paul Jessup. Uh, thank you for everyone who gave me the thumbs up. Please remember to like and most of all, most importantly, share this story. Ugh. This program, this show, this waste of a Monday evening, this whatever it is. To be in with a chance to win a pack of four tile mates who are our channel sponsor and i will leave you on that note thank you so much for uh, everyone who tuned in um have a great week and i will see you back on sunday uh rather than monday because it's not valentine's day next sunday so i'll see you next sunday eight o'clock in the evening thanks once again good night